The electronics engineering new TOS board exam is apparently the hardest engineering exam in the Philippines. I mean, just look at those numbers. Parang win rate mo lang sa ML, Dota or Valorant, diba? So, to help you with that, here is a quick guide on how I survived and even top the recently conducted April 2023 board exams. Tip number one. Ay, oh wait nga bala. Before that, a little bit of background muna. I graduated from USEP or University of Southeastern Philippines last July 2022 and unfortunately, and the fell short of the cumulative rating just by 0.02%. Luckily, I decided to work hard during my review and top the 7th place with a rating of 86.9. So here's my rating. Also, I have been working for different tech companies over the years and I even had freelance experience in Upwork and Fiber. Enough of those background, let's get straight to it. Tip number one, you have four subjects, CST, LX, Math, and JS. What I recommend is for you to get a review routine as early as now. So yung routine na ito, it will be your guide for the next five or six months of your reviewing. Every day, you need to drag and wake yourself up to do this routine consistently. It will build the correct habit and mindset in the long run. Here is how my routine looks like na the review pa ako sa Excel. Every day during the board review, I would wake up at around 6 and then pray and brew my favorite drink which is Milo. Effective guys from Patalina during the board review, Milo every day lang. 7 a.m. then I would stare outside for 5 minutes to clear my mind and prepare. Then 8 to 10, deep studying and brush at 10.30. If you notice, um, dalawang minutes na ako per day during the review. Part na rin yun sa discipline na ako and to lose weight rin kasi it's one of my goals. 11 a.m. I continue reading and answering yung mga naiwan ko. And 12 p.m. I would prepare for classes and Lego na and hygiene for one hour. Then one to four, I would go to class and attend the lectures. This one is my favorite part. So life hacks nga pala during lectures. If you feel sleepy, hindi talaga ako nag sa coffee or sa mga caffeinated drinks during the review. Ang ginamit ko lang is snow bear and too big. So every time na sleepy ako, take snow bear, take too big, inom, inom ng inom. Then five to six, I would dress or take a nap and then dinner and of course, buy snacks for the evening study session which is binangkal. My favorite bread during the review sessions. 7 to 9, I would rewrite my notes from the class earlier. So yung class ko from 1 to 4, isusulat ko lahat ng mga nung need ko matutunan doon, mga isubihan doon. And then I would also study my weaknesses or mga kulang ko pa na mga topics. Then 10 p.m. social media and video calls. And 11 p.m. I would brew tea to help me sleep. I know that it will be very hard to start. But once na simulan mo na, it will get you going. It came to the point where this routine was deeply embedded in my veins. Kumbaga, Naka-autopilot na ako ba studying and I cannot stay away from it. Remember, you do not need to give your 100% especially at the beginning. What you need to do is slowly build towards at 100% and even go beyond as you familiarize yourself with your review routine. Tip number 2, Pomodoro Technique. What is Pomodoro Technique? Well, it is a time management technique wherein you segment your work and rest intervals into different types. You may either have a 25 minute work and a 5 minute break or a 50 minute work and 10 minute break. Depending na rin yun sa preference mo. I noticed that when I started Pomodoro Technique, I became more focused and motivated to finish the small topics instead of those long and very heavy bulky ones. Here is a simple metaphor on why it is very effective. Compare the two texts side by side. Which one is easier to process? The one on the right, diba? This is because the text on the right has stops or rests like these white spaces and it helps your brain to process it easier and quicker. The same can be said during studying wherein if you give your brain enough time to recover and recuperate, you will have better efficiency and productivity in your workflow. One recommended tool that you can use is the Pomodoro app. It's available in the App Store and the Play Store anytime and you can download it for free. I myself use this app to get to the review time. In connection with the work and rest balance, I recommend tip number three which is to always rest properly. Now, this rest might mean the form of your napping, sleeping, and even scrolling through your TikTok and Facebook just to get rid of negative emotions during the review. There's no right or wrong method of resting as long as it suits you and fits you. Just make sure that it will not impede your studying. I recommend to take small breaks, especially when you don't get the topic that you're studying for anymore and if things get too hard. Kumbaga, pahinga pahinga din pag may time. During the review, me and my friends would take walks, go to Darinderia or even go jogging every Saturday just to refresh our body and soul para mas handa kaming mag-review pa ng mas marami. Remember that part also of the review process is for you to enjoy what you're doing and make it a memorable experience. Tip number four, assess yourself every week. Back when I reviewed for the boards, I would always revisit the TOS and see which parts ang kulang ako. And then, I would highlight those parts na kompleto ko na or that are ongoing. 
and leave blank yung mga hindi ko pa natatapos. This way, I have a physical or a mental note on which parts I need to study more or kung saan pa ako gulang. Pro tip, pro tip ha, based on my observations, I see math as the most crucial subject. For one, ito ang pinakaunang subject during the boards. Meaning that if you mess this up, chances are you won't be motivated anymore to continue the next three subjects. Second is that mathematics is the only subject in which kulang talaga ang oras. I remember when I was taking the exam, I had plenty of time during majors. Like 1 hour and 30 minutes or 2 hours pa tapos na ako sa ELEX at DSK. Pero pagdating sa math na ako, grabe, I tell you, kahit 4 hours or 5 hours pa yung ibigay na time, it will never be enough to check, recheck, and to make sure that your answers are correct. This is the reason on why una kong tinapos ang math na topics during my review para may time pa na maabsorb ko lahat ng content and mga concepts sa aking brain. Tip number 5, huwag magpakahero. Always and always take the shortest route in answering questions. Malamang sa malamang, napakaraming calculator techniques at mga methods and processes ang ituturo sa inyo during the review by your board review center. There are many ways to solve a problem after all. My personal tip is to try everything once. So try it once ha, and find your favorite technique at yun yung i-master mo until the end of the review. At least, may isa kang na-master na sobra compared sa marami kang tinry pero wala kang na-master, diba? Those things, you will gradually add up sa score mo during viewing of the results. Tip number 6. Solve a lot of problems. All the questions and all the four subjects follow a pattern. One can even say that the board exam is a competition na paramihan ng masasagot ng mga MCQ or mga problems as well as understand the things na nadaanan mo na dati. Always remember, the board exam is a multiple choice type of exam. You always have 25% chance of getting the correct answer. Well, that is assuming na wala kang alam. Suppose you have four choices and yung isang choice na daanan mo na dati and sa mga previous mo na mga review, nalaman mo na iba ang definition nito. Thus, you can then eliminate that very answer and now your chances have gone from 25% to 33%. That's a huge jump considering the difficulty of our board exam. That correct answer can be attributed just because you answered a lot of questions in the past. This is not only applicable on the majors but also in math. Kahit solving pa yan, the more problems you solve, you will quickly recognize patterns and find muscle memory to which magiging intuition or kutob na lang kung ano mga kailangan mong gawin for that specific question. And my final tip of course is to positively gaslight yourself. Gaslight mo lang self mo na kaya mo or yung tatap ko sa burns. Fake it till you make it ika nga. During my review days, I would spend around 20 seconds every day just looking at the mirror and motivating myself saying, Uy, Hindi yung top natural, di ba? Or oh, magtatap ka, magtatap ka. It's like a mantra that I have embedded in my system and it helped me be motivated to start a new day. And fortunately, it became a reality. The true journey towards victory always starts in believing in yourself and your capabilities. Of course, include prayers na rin and a healthy spiritual life para okay na okay ang review process mo. Keep in mind that the board is not only a battle of the brains but also a battle of fortitude and mental endurance. Last nga pala, here are some of the books that I used during the review process. <laughs> Aminado ako na EST ang pinakamahina kong subject. Maybe because your majors namin nun is during the pandemic. So, yun ang subject in which pinakamaramay akong binasa na libro. So, these are the books that I have read. Frenzel, Communication Electronics, and ang pinaka kinatatakutan na lahat, Tomasi, Electronics Communication System. So these two books, um, so these two books, around 80% siguro ang progress ko. Of course, pilihin mo lang yung mga topics na kasali sa TOS natin. Kasi hindi naman lahat kailangan mong studyhan, like the satellites, mga ganun, mga satcoms. Disclaimer lang, if there's no time or wala na talagang oras, do not try to open a book. Instead, mag-rely ka na lang si Bibigyan ng review center nyo. Chances are, they will give you the concepts and necessary steps that are sufficient for you to survive the board exam. Sa math naman, I relied purely on lectures and of course sa calculator techniques by Dimal volume 1 and 2. Damihan mo lang pag solve the problems and you will be good to go. Siguro during the math review around 20 to 50 problems every day ang kaya. Just finish the difficult integral calculus um, differential equations and advanced math of the calculator techniques book. After that, I can say that you will be ready to conquer the math exam. In my case, um, tatlong beses ko siyang binalik-balik. Hindi nakasali yung mga konting review lang but run through talaga sa buong libro tatlong beses. And after nun, medyo napadali na ang pagsasolve ko ng mga math problems. For electronics, Floyd and Bolyestad is the key. Sali mo na rin ng napaka ng napakadaming mga questions sa NGBix. If kaya mo, 
ubusin mo yung lahat kasi magandang practice questions yan. Siguro ang progress ko sa Injabix is around mga 50% or 60% lang ng mambuong questionnaires. Lastly, for JS naman, hindi na ako nag-rely ng review. Lastly, for JS naman, hindi na ako nag-rely ng resources na iba. Nag-depend na ako sa binigay ng review center namin and it was more than enough to cover for all the JS topics, especially sa mga laws and yung mga stuff like that. Practice read pag especially sa physics and mga chemistry ng mga questions like thermodynamics, mga beams, mga ganun. At dyan, nagtatapos ang tips ko for the board exams. If this video gets more likes and reach, then I might upload a more comprehensive guide of the resources and materials I used during the review. Isasali ko na rin ng mga tools, mga softwares na ginamit ko na effective talaga at nakahelp sa amin. Please do subscribe to my channel for more review tips, engineering tips, and career tips, especially if you are an up-and-coming engineer in the Philippines. Also, follow me on my socials. The links are in the description below. Till next time!